welcome you at this time this way. We were talking about uh, Happy May Day and about uh, this time of year is a time where we, I, I struggle with the blackberry bushes out there in my pasture. And uh, I know a lot of you like blackberries and, and they're pretty tasty, but at the same time it's a very invasive bush. It's very hard to deal with. So anybody who wants to come and help get rid of them, you just let me know. Today we come now at this time and in this way to uh, think about Nija Danatli Ale Nija Dalai, which of course is uh, sisters and brothers, and also brothers and sisters. And so our readings for today are begin with uh, Psalm 22, going to the Hebrew Bible, Psalm 22, 25 through 31. So if you want to get your Hebrew Bibles out, we'll, uh, we're going to go that direction. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear God. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek God shall praise God. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to God, and all the families of the nations shall worship before God. For dominion belongs to God, and, to, and God rules over the nations. To God, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before God shall bow all who go down to the dust. And I shall live for God, lost Posterity will serve God. Future generations will be told about God and proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that God has done it. Our reading from the uh, New Testament, we're going to look at... Uh, 1 John 4, 7 through 21. Eja ge yu e, de ga da ge yus di, ada ge yun di ye nos ge san, une la na hi, uda yo da le na hi, ni lo no, juda ge yun so, une la na hi, na nu go we san hi, ge so hi, Ale agataho une la na hi. Udage ya hi no, ni gi sana udla, ya gataho une la na hi, une la na hi yo no, udage ya di, ye san, da don ha. Ani, ya, gani ye san, no le sta na gi. Une la na hi i gi ye na sa i. Une la na hi ye na je na se u wa sa hi ya u de ne la hi u e ji i lo hi u lu hi di i na zi i ya wa i so di i ga ne da a ge wa da di i. Ane hiya adage yandi ge sahi udla une la nahi adige yu hi yu nulista nahi ayas gini hi hi ge yahi yu yu nulista nahi ale junasa uje lega Uweji alingus alis gola tani tanahi aguya dodi igis gas jahi ija geya i you know une la nahi nasgi iga i agi ge ya hi you you lista nahi ige aya naspo di da Diga da ge yahi yu yigi. Udla 
In English, 
Our reading is first from 1 John 4, 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent God's son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and God's love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in God and God in us, because God has given us the God's Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that God has sent God's Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus, Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as God is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. The perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached the perfection in love. We love because God first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from God is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Who are our brothers and sisters? This has been a question that believers have been asking for a very long time. For the simple fact that, you know, we look at our family brothers and sisters and we think, yeah, well, these are our brothers and sisters. And then we see the strangers on the street and we hear the saying that, you know, blood is thicker than water. I heard that growing up from my dad, who is not Indian, but I heard from say that over and over again, blood is thicker than water. So if blood is thicker than water, who is our brothers and sisters? Well, as I was looking this up in the uh, book here, which is the lectionary, the Peace New on the Word lectionary for this, this particular time of year, this particular Sunday, the fifth Sunday after Easter, the first words I saw in the exegetical reading here by Gary W. Charles was, handle with care. In other words, this is a hot topic that can really upset a lot of people. And first and foremost, when we dig into this reading and we look back at the reading in Psalms, we have to remember that this is all about God. It's not about us. It's about God. It's about Jesus. And what we have to think about is, very simply and very clearly, is that this reading here today is about our being perfected in God's image. In God's presence in God's reality. The scripture says that God is love. Okay. The scripture says Jesus is love because Jesus set that example for us by giving of himself that we may live. 
spent his life curing the sick, helping to improve the quality of life for the people, suffered, died, and was raised because of it. For the forgiveness of our wrongdoings, those that we know and those that we don't know. And so we have to think about what does it mean for us to be perfected in the image of God? What are we supposed to be like in order for God not to look at us and call us a bunch of liars? Or for other people to look at us and call us a bunch of liars? Well, that's where it gets a little controversial because there are many people who believe, many theologians who believe, that the pastoral letters may not necessarily be authentic. And that's okay. But, uh, you know, God's teaching comes from many sources, not just from the New Testament. And I know that's going to be a very controversial statement for many people, but it's true. You know, God speaks to us directly, individually. That's a source of teaching from God to us personally. But in this scripture, what this reading is challenging us to do is to look at how we are allowing our culture, our families, our employers to influence our interpretation of what we ought to be like versus what God expects us to be. Now, as we look at this reading, you know, we get into that, okay, the definition of love. There are several in the Greek. The word used in this text is agape, which is a love that is often uh, transcribed as meaning brotherly love. Not, not intimate love, not, not uh, relational love, but brotherly love or sisterly love. It's a love of family. There's another word that can be applied in this context, but for this purpose, we are looking at the uh, the sacrificing, agape is self-sacrificing love, and philio is, can, can be more equated with a brotherly love, family love, but agape is also in that category because it is a sacrificing love, and who do we are willing to sacrifice ourselves for? We sacrifice ourselves for our family, for those who are dear to us. Now, according to God, everyone is dear to God. And according to Jesus, everyone is dear to Jesus, which is why Jesus sacrificed himself for everyone and not just the few. So the question becomes, are we willing to sacrifice ourselves for the many as we are called to do or are we looking at just sharing ourselves, sacrificing ourselves for those that we care about? Now, there are many ways to sacrifice. And let's talk about that for a minute because there is a difference between sacrifice and uh, giving of ourselves to those who live. Give away. It's called give away. In the Indian religious tradition, you have sacrifice and give away. And from a Native American religious perspective, Native American Christian perspective, sacrifice means doing something you don't really want to do, but you do it anyway. Whereas give away is giving something that you are willing to give away because you care so much about what you're doing, about the people you're helping. It's more important for you to do the gift way than it is for you to hold on to whatever you're giving away. You value the people more than you do whatever you're giving away. In this sense, it could be like uh, uh, giving money to help the poor, the hungry. Uh, that's kind of a that's an agape thing, that's a sacrifice thing, because you're probably thinking, okay, well, I'm doing this because it's expected of me. I'm doing this because, you know, I'm a church leader and I've got to set a good example for the other people. Or, you know, I want to make sure I can buy my way into heaven so I better give this money to these poor people 
So, you know, there's a lot of different rationalizations or justifications for doing something like that. That's not really coming from that place of love. That's coming from that place of, you know, just going along to get along. And this is the fine point on what the, the writer of this text is teaching us or telling us is that, you know, God is all about gift way. Jesus is all about gift way. You know, the sacrifice isn't really there because Jesus, I mean, he was scared to death. Um, I was terrified to go through it, which I can't blame him for that. But it was the right thing for him to do, so he did it anyway. In that sense, it was a sacrifice, a sacrificial gift way. The whole of the full meaning of both of those definitions. He did it because he loved people so much it was worth doing. But he was also terrified to do that. Today, in the world you live in, in the culture you live in, the community where you live, whatever your situation is, when you think about who your brothers and sisters are and whether or not they deserve your love and support, do you think about just those in your immediate family or in your immediate community or anyone? Or do you think about the folks down the road or maybe, you know, poor people here in Oklahoma, you know, we have a lot of poor people here. And I unfortunately hear comment, oh, they ought to, they ought to just quit bumming around and go get a job. Well, that shows how ignorant and narcissistic people are when they make those statements. It also shows they lack empathy, compassion, and understanding of the social structures that created the situation in the first place. But also, too, when you think about your brothers and sisters, do you think about them? Do you think about the homeless veterans and supporting them? Do you think about Native Americans? And supporting them. Right now at this time, you know, within the disciples denomination, we've got a, a challenging road ahead of us because we have proven and pointed, you know, called them out on it, the institutional, the culture of institutional racism towards Native Americans that has dominated the disciples' life and bureaucracy since its inception almost 50 years ago. Is that brotherly love? Is that agape? To intentionally isolate and segregate and dismiss, diminish and dismiss an entire population of people? Is that the example Christ was setting? Are you participating in that against anyone? Do you value human beings more importantly than you value what's going on in your world around you? When you share your resources, your time, your energy, your effort, your money, is it to help improve the quality of life of other people equally? Or is it just for those who you care about? Because you know it. And the scripture tells us like that, you know, flat out. Uh, you know, God loves everybody and not just those you know. Do you demonstrate hospitality towards everyone? And there's another aspect of this text that we need to look at. And, you know, uh, this writer here too, uh, Gary Charles points out that, I believe it's him that points out that uh, there is a translational challenge when you look at the NRSV translation versus the NIV translation to this opening verse where it says the word beloved. In this NRSV translation it says beloved. 
versus you know the N NIV, which is you know uh, their friends. The important context here is that in the original Greek, the word agape toy was used in this opening word, and in the Greek, agape toy, during that time period, that first century Palestinian time period, the first century Hellenistic time period, agape toy carried a term of endearment. So the writer is saying, I don't know who you people are, that are reading this letter. But to me, you are family. You are my brothers and sisters. Not just strangers who I say, oh, dear friends, you know, hey, nice, nice to see you. How you doing? No. It's not like you're talking yeah, to neighbors aren't related to you. You go, hey, how's it going? He's saying, hey, family, come on down, let's talk. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. You have to look at it from that first century context about what was the meaning behind the writer's intended conveyance of the feeling, the emotion attached to what he was saying or she was saying in this context. And that feeling is, at the beginning and the end, the feeling that all human beings our, our brothers and sisters. And as such, we do have a responsibility to honor God's intention in this matter of treating all people as brothers and sisters, welcoming everyone equally and treating them with dignity and respect. Because it's all about God. It's not about us. And the psalmist, who is attached to this reading this week, the psalmist is pointing that out. You look at the psalm, you go back to the psalm, the psalm clearly reflects, it's reading in the psalm, clearly reflects a praise a component to it, but the message conveyed in this praise aspect of the psalm is that it's all about God. God made us, God made the earth, God made the universe, and God is going to make sure that the generations to come, and in our Indian religious tradition, we practice that, we believe in doing what is best for the next seven generations and not just ourselves. But God is making sure that all those generations to come know about God. That is a commitment that God has made. And here we are thousands of years later from the time this was written. And we are learning about God, just as the psalmist uh, prophesied in this context. God's making sure that the people learn about God. And not because of us, but because it's all about God. Everything that we think, we say we do, has to be about God. And we have to do it in a loving way. Because if we are about God, if we are blessed with God's spirits, as the writer in 1 John says, that we are, if we love God, we are blessed with God's spirit. If we have God's spirit within us, then we must practice love towards all peoples and not just ourselves. The continuity here in that message is pretty amazing, especially in its continuous today, as we look at the, the commandment that we have, because the writer doesn't say, you know, the, doesn't say the suggestion that God has given us, or maybe uh, the desire that God has given for us. He said, no, he says the commandment, the absolute, uncompromising order that God has laid out for us is that we are the commandment we have from God is this those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also 
This is a reaffirmation of the commandment laid out by Jesus. The second commandment is, we've got to love everybody because if we're not loving everybody, if we are excluding people because of race, ethnicity, culture, this includes Muslims, it includes Jews, it includes Native Americans, Hispanics, Asians, whoever. Gays, straights, whatever. If we are not loving our brothers and sisters as God has commanded us, can we truly say that we have God's Spirit within us? And that's why Gary Charles said, handle with care. Because this is a hot topic. Here in North America, many people like to believe that they are morally superior to others. Especially here in Oklahoma, we get it a lot. They like to look down on other people as being inferior. Well, that's not God's way. That's not the way of God's spirit. That's the way of ego, of our desire to feel powerful, to feel greater than other people. When in our Indian religious tradition, we strive not to be greater than our brothers and sisters, but to be equal to them and to treat them in a good way with agape, that sacrifice and love, and filio both brotherly love, sisterly love, combined together as one. We give of ourselves that others may live out of love for everyone. This week the Baltimore riots have been very prominent in the media. Racism appears to be on the rise in the United States again and elsewhere, probably Canada, here in North America. Racism towards blacks, towards Native Americans appears to be on the rise again because this country has a culturally embedded belief in moral superiority, manifest destiny. And that can only be under, overcome when people choose to acknowledge that God's Spirit requires us to love everyone and not just the select few in our immediate circle. So the question becomes, do you have a willingness to practice God's love according to the commandment that God has laid down for us and let go of your need to feel superior to others. What can you